Just let me send for... Well, if I alive, I'd trust any further and I could throw him. Me and Lake, you in the bank, it's money, and they'll toss you in the calaboose. Me? I wouldn't toss anybody. We'll open that safe for you, banker. so sure. Let's hang around a while and see what happens. Now the next man that takes a step's gonna buy himself a whole boot full of trouble. Just hold on to your britches and you'll get your money. You handle them alone, Chad? Yeah, I'll try. You won't have to make your job. All right. My dear friend, a man in his lifetime comes to many turning points. Things just seem to fall into line. Opportunity presents itself. And many's the man that lets that moment slip by, slither through his fingers, never to return, lets himself be distracted by mundane things. Oh, well, I want to tell you, Major, you'd never do that, never in a million years. And this is that moment for me, Reese. Are you ready? Yes, sir. You betcha I am. You know, bugles should be blaring, and flags waving, and drums rolling. Let her rip, Major. This is a moment in history. Can you feel the excitement of it? Huh? Yes, sir, Major. I surely can. Yeah. Reese, how many Indians are there? Oh, well, uh, pretty many, Major. And Indians wear blankets for warmth. But what holds those blankets on? Well, nothing. Ah, but in the future, those blankets will be held in place by a cane, hasty and fast fastener. And wagon wheels, too. A cane, hasty and fast fastener on the end of every axle, attached to all removed at the twist of a wrist. Hmm? And harnesses can be repaired on the trail with a cane hasty and fast fastener. And horse blankets, too. Why, this thing would uh, keep a blanket on a sweating coat. Well, uh, right, right, right. I tell you, the uses for this are endless. Oh, I want to tell you, Major, that thing's going to make you just about the richest man in the whole wide world, I'll tell you that. I already am, Reese. I have you for my friend. Oh, now, Major. Major John, I've been looking all over for you. We about got a riot on our hands over there at the bank. The bank? Yeah, the safe door's jammed. You're gonna have to come on over, sir, and get it open for him. Well, I'll be very happy to oblige, Joe. I've got to stop by the shop and get my tools. Oh, uh, uh, Major, Major. Uh, that's my hat, Major. Huh? Well, what happened to my hat? You weren't wearing any, Major. <laughs> Pilford, probably. That hat cost me $30. Well, now, I'm gonna... Uh... <laughs> Major John, I'm certainly glad to see you. All right, don't get yourself in the lather. Hang these up, will you? Yes. Now, that is Major John's hat, Reese. This is my hat, Fillmore. Oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> Bank was almost... Hush, hush, Fillmore. Major can't do his work with all this ruckus going on. Sorry, Major John. 
Uh, give it a good whack on the dial, will you, Reese? Yes, sir, Major. Yes, sir. That's fine. Cold chisel. Hammer. Cold chisel. Hammer. Just amazing. What? Just, just like a magic show. Yeah, that's what you got, Major. You got magic in them hands. That's what he got. I don't know what I'd have done. It's a pleasure, Fillmore. All right, Chad, let him in. Right. Do you know what we just seen? Seen the inside of a bank be a pretty hard one to empty. The range office is just around the corner. We ride in. Pretty easy to get in, not so easy to get out. Did you see that little old fella open up that safe? Sure. He opens it. Well, what do you want to do, clean it out right then with the ranger standing there? Oh, Sab, Sab, you, you was born mighty long on nerve, but you're awful short on brain. Now, yeah, if I've got brain. Well, then use them. Look, finding him is like finding the key to the door of the mint. If he could open up other safes as easy as he opened up that one, if he was opening them for us. A chihuahua. That man is no bank robber. Besides, what we need with somebody to open up safes. We ride into town, and we make somebody in the bank open his safe for us. We take the money and go. You ain't thinking, Sam. Catch me up to something. Uh, you didn't forget nothing, Major. You got it on. Go ahead, Sam. You see what I say? That face. No, that man is no bank robber. <laughs> no, he ain't. Not yet. <laughs> How'd you like a double that best part? I'd love it. You would? <laughs> How long's this been going on, Jack? A little over four minutes. All right, this is your last chance, folks, to get down a wager. I'm giving two to one on the Ranger that it doesn't go the limit. You better make that even money, Chad. Just stick to your business, Joe. Come on. I don't see any takers, Chad. All right. Take him down, Joe. What do you think I'm trying to do? You got about eight seconds left. Now we can lose all the money on the table. Now come on. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Take it down. Take it down. Four. All the way. Three. Down. Go. Hey, Bart. I, I didn't mean to beat you. I'm real sorry about that. You got a real stout arm. a very good loser. Just give him a minute and he'll apologize. I guarantee it. Yeah. He's a real nice fellow. Come on, Steve. Come on, Joe. Set him up, Joe. There you go. Joe, come on, Joe. Come on, now, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Joe, will you just sit down, please? Steve. 
I, uh, I just want you to know that there ain't gonna be any hard feelings, Bart. <laughs> You know, I, uh, I just plumb didn't want to do that. But then, uh, but then again, I didn't want folks thinking that somebody can come up and stick it on a ranger and just up and walk away. So now, if you'll give me a minute, I'll come back and apologize. I guarantee it. <laughs> Reese, do you realize that that stage has been in for 20 minutes? Could be my patents came in it in the mail. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... You saw him open that safe. I want to tell you, boys, that man has got magic hands. And my watch. And your hat. The Major has magic hands and taken ways. Well, now, the Major, he just uh, picks up whichever hat happens to be close by. He ain't like he's stealing. What is it like, Reese? Well, the... The, the Major's got so many inventions and, and, and such like going around his head all the time that, well, he don't even pay no attention to it. Well, now you don't dang well he ain't stealing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this works, we'll be setting on top of the world. I don't like sneaking around. All I'm saying is, give it a chance. Look, uh, things are changing too fast nowadays. Uh, there's too many things can go wrong for us to just ride in and take over a bank like we used to do. Sab, answer me this. Since I've been planning our jobs, has anybody took us yet? Does anyone know who we are? Has anyone even come close to catching us? No. So why do it different? We got a good way to work. Good men. What do we need this old man for? Sad, look. Now, there's some banks that are just full of money that we can't touch. For one reason or another, either the, the safe is too tough or there are too many guards or... But with this old man, there ain't a bank in the country that we can't take. I still don't like it. Sad. Are we gonna have to draw on each other to settle this? <laughs> How about this? We try one bank. Then we decide again. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Now, this is what I was planning. Matt, Lou, Tuck, you three fellas meet us on that little old ridge south of Porfirio tomorrow night. That'll give a sad bed and me time to go pick up our old man. We grab him. He never opened his safe for us. Freddy here is going to talk him into it. And I lost the keys. Somewhere between here and Porfirio. Yes, I think I ought to be able to turn out at least a couple of hundred a day of my fast fasteners with this machine. And I'm not much for riding. Got thrown twice on the way over here, and I don't know what I'll do. Now, 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 just a minute, son. Nothing is worth getting that bothered over. Now, let's say it again and slower. I work at the bank in Porfirio. Uh, and your boss has gone to El Paso on business. He left me in charge. Mm -hmm. How is old Martin Gale? <laughs> oh, he was a wild one when he was younger. I soldiered with him. Oh, we don't talk much about his help. He's a hard man to have for a boss. Uh, I'm just a clerk. Oh, a clerk, I am. Well, he must think an awful lot of you to put you in charge. Oh, he sure won't if I can't get this mess straightened out. Well, now, what exactly went wrong? Well, the safe got locked. Well, that's what it's supposed to do. But the money wasn't in it. I put the money down on the desk. I don't know exactly how it did happen. I locked the safe, and I left the money out. Oh, I see. And you don't know the combination. And on the way over here, my horse threw me twice, and, and I lost the keys to the back door. My, my, this just hasn't been your day, has it? Not hardly. And you heard about me all the way over in Porfirio, did you? Oh, I don't guess there's anyone for a hundred miles doesn't know about you, Mr. Kane. Well, now, I'll get that safe open for you. Uh, and I've got a little thing rigged up here that'll open the door, too. I won't be able to pay you much. Oh, won't cost you a cent. You're a Texas man, and so am I. Oh, I know that you do the same for me. 
You're an even finer man than what they say you are. Yeah, I think so. Me. Uh, oh, Mr. Kane, mm -hmm. that hat? Oh, yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> that cost me $30. It fits me a little snug, though. Maybe, uh, maybe I need a haircut. <laughs> Not again. Well, now, you can't call that Mexican raid last spring a bank robbery, Chad. Well, they took everything that was nailed down that time. Including you. And your <laughs> guns and boots, if I ain't mistaken. I hope I'm not interrupting you, Reese. Oh, no, sir, Captain. You just go right ahead. Thank you. This telegram doesn't contain very much information. Do they know who done it, Captain? Didn't say. Well, we ain't gonna find no bank robber sitting here. Let's go. So long, Captain. You'll never get away with this. I repeat, you'll never get away with this. We already did, old soldier. <laughs> what is you, you're taking advantage of? No Texas man would trade on the goodwill of another. Where were you born? Massachusetts. Uh, I might have known. Your day will come. Uh, take my word for it. Your day will come. Now, now, now. There ain't no need in you getting all riled up. Riled? Why, this is an outrage. Making me a party to a bank holdup. If you've got one grain of sense in you, you will return that money. I've said all I intend to. Hey, just a minute, that's my gun. Look, you ain't going no place, old man. You was in that holdup, too. And they'd just as soon throw you in jail as they would us if we was took. Now, make up your mind. You are now in the bank robbing business, and that's all there is to it. Mm. Well, you're going to have to shoot me to keep me here. You'd rather get thrown in jail than get rich? If the great state of Texas does me that injustice, I can forgive them. What if we shoot you? I'd expect it. But you've forgotten one thing, the Texas Rangers. And one Texas Ranger in particular, my good friend Reese Bennett. Ha! <laughs> He'll find a clue. He'll track you down if it takes the last breath in him. And meantime, even if you keep me here a captive, I'll never lay a hand on a safe to help any one of you honorary coyotes. What I tell you? You see what I say to you? He won't do nothing. You hear that? He got friends who are Texas Rangers. You hear that? And they're going to be coming after us. You hear that? Oh, we got to shoot this old man. No, it's just talk, Sam. But... Hey, Lou, put him in the corner. Don't let him get out there. Now, 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 wait. Now, you're making a great mistake, so get it back. Let me alone. Let me out. He sure got a lot of steam in him for an old man. Why don't we shoot this old man and go to Mexico? We got money. We can rob banks in Mexico. What do we need with Texas Rangers looking for us? How are they gonna know to look for us? You hear what the old man say? Oh, it's just talk, Sab. Look, I'm gonna show you. You come with me. I'll prove to you how safe we are. Come on. Where are you going now? Porfirio. We just robbed the bank in Porfirio. We can come and go as we please. Come on. something he ate. You know better than that, Joe. He's probably got something up his sleeve. Why don't you just come straight out and ask him? All right, Reese, what are you so happy about? Well, if you was thinking about where we was going, you'd be happy, too. Huh? But, Perio. What about it? Well, now, don't that bring nothing to mind? Well, it sure does. That bunch of Mexican bandits had carted off everything they could carry last spring. They carted it off, but who brung it back? Well, we did. Chad and... <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, well, don't you figure them folks is gonna be some kind of grateful? The way I see it, why, they're gonna just make us as comfortable as can be did. Sure they are, Reese. 
Why, shucks, I know, uh, I know if it was me out there, I'd sure rule out a big welcome for the fellas that saved my town. If we have to lay out the price of one beer, I'm gonna be just as surprised as I can get. Hmm. Well, one thing they got for Furio is pretty girl. It's a pure gospel. What's the matter with you, Sab? There ain't no one knows we done that. We didn't even leave any tracks for them rangers to follow. And there's no risk. Nobody to shoot at us, because there ain't nobody up around here at night. You mark my words, Sab. By the time we get through with this, we're gonna be so rich, we're gonna have to build our own bank to keep our money in. And I tell you that that old man is not... So it is. Well, old reset didn't be a reception committee waiting for us. There it is, just jumping all over us. Kind of touching, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you just wait and see what happens when folks find out who we are. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Good though. Hello there. You fellas are rangers, ain't you? Uh, the fact is, we are. <laughs> Figured you was. Ed Fry, that's me, Ed Fry. Ed? Well, uh, I'm Reese Bennett. Chad Cooper, Joe Riley. Howdy. Glad to see y'all. We was them rangers what caught them bandits and cleaned out the ferio last spring. I heard about that. Mighty fancy job. Well, now, that's right kind of you, sir. Well, hope you gents enjoy your visit. I'll see you. Yes. Thanks a lot. Nice fella. Kind of hard looking, but nice fella. Well, this is hard country around here, Reese. <laughs> Bank robbers don't talk to rangers. We ain't in jail, are we? Oh, no, not yet. And not never. That ought to prove it to you. That's why I done it, to prove it to you. The ranger, the one with that voice like a frog. He's a friend of the old man's. That's right. We gotta get them friends together. Yeah. <laughs> he saw what you look like. Now when he talks to the banker, Oh, what can he tell? Who saw us, anyway, hmm? Nobody saw anybody. I locked the safe up on Saturday about noon. Came back to work on the books late Sunday. Found it still locked, opened it up, and it was empty. Cleaned out, just like it is now. No broken windows? No. Well, they must have come in by the door. Who else has a key? I have the only key. Well, there sure wasn't any explosion. There's not a mark on that door. Somebody just opened it up. I'm the only one who has the combination. Sure don't look good for you, Martingale. This is my bank. I have nothing to gain and everything to lose if that money isn't recovered. And I resent your... Mr. Martingale, I'm sure Mr. Bennett didn't really mean that the way it sounded. Uh, no, sir. You see, what he really meant was... Uh... Explain it to him, Chad. <laughs> Well, what he meant, Mr. Martin. I know, know what he meant, and I don't like it. Uh, well, Mr. Martingale, sir, was there, was there anything else taken? Nothing of any value. A paperweight from off my desk is missing. Well, maybe you'd better look around the rest of your office, Mr. Martingale, see if anything else is missing. 
Well, now I know what you're thinking, and I can tell you right now, you didn't have nothing. It's slow and easy. It wasn't him that done it, Joe. Reese, add it up. It's got to be. No, it don't, Chad. It don't at all. Well, it sure looks like it. Let me tell you something. That safe and that door was open just as easy as pie. And what else was missing? A paperweight from the banker's desk. Well, that don't mean he had anything to do with it. Anybody could, could, could take a paperweight How and... many men do you know that can open a safe without knowing the combination? Lots of them. Could you name one? Well, I know for an answer. Well, well, yes. Well, I'm, uh, I just ain't too good at names. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. If Major John had anything to do with this at all, some owl who had a gun at his head or, or some such, I'll tell you that right now. Was it him that done it? Could never have been. Could never have been. Never. We'll be in touch with you, Mr. Martingale. I hope so. Welcome, Reese. Don't forget the dog, Joe. No, uh, don't matter, no. Uh, not with you two laying the blame for that bank robbing at Major John's door. Uh, Reese, we didn't say that he did it. Well, saying that nobody else could have done it, saying the same thing. Looky here, that's all we got to go on, Reese. We know he could have done it. Uh, maybe he was forced into it. He'd have rather got himself shot first. All right, then there's only one way to settle it. We send a telegram to Captain Parmalee, have him check up on Major John, and see if he's left Laredo. And have the captain get wondering why we're asking? No, sir. Huh? Somebody's just going to have to ride back. Who goes, Reese? All right. A friend like the Major's worth the ride. And I'll bet you a month's pay he's sitting out on his ranch when I get there. No bet. We don't want him to be mixed up in it, Reese. Well, you never could tell hearing you talk. I'll tell you that by Hannah. <laughs> now you listen to me, doggy. You stay right here. I got some work to do. You follow them two around for a while. I'll see you later. You be a good doggy now, huh? Is your name Reese Bennett? Yeah, it is. Major John sent me to... Where is he? If they see me talking to you, they'll kill me. Who will? We can talk in the hotel there. Where do you live? Sit still in the saloon. Good. Let's go. Major. Huh? Oh, if you just laid one hand on him. Just one hand? I'll skin you alive, all of you. Skin you alive and, and, and pad pry your gizzards. No, they didn't hurt me. No, they just hurt my good name. They hoodwinked me into robbing this safe at the Porfirio Bank. Didn't I see you in Porfirio? That's a fact. You sure did. Uh, uh Major John. You know, we're planning on uh, robbing some banks, and we were sort of expecting you to be opening them safe. He would never do anything like that in his whole life. I'll tell you that right now. How about it, Major? My friend spoke my mind. Oh. Uh -huh. If I was you, I'd start worrying about how much wear and tear this fella can take. Because that's what he's going to have to do unless you quit being so stubborn. Ooh. Stop it. Stop it. 
stop it. Reese never would have left Porfirio without old Cactus here. Well, he couldn't have, Joe. There ain't no stage from here to Laredo. Where in Blue Blazes is he? Well, I don't know. He couldn't have made it there and back overnight. Not on his horse, he couldn't. Well, maybe we ought to wire the captain and find out if he is there. Well, now, Chad, unless he's learned how to fly, he couldn't be there. And if he was there, the last thing he'd want to be old Captain Parmalee catching sight of him. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody here in this town saw him. Chad, we ain't gonna talk to everybody in this here town again, are we? Unless you come up with a better idea. Well, now, looky here. Reese left us over at the saloon, didn't he? Right. So if we was to check between here and the saloon, maybe we'd come up with some sign or, or something. Joe, how are you going to tell a difference between Reese's sign and anybody else's in the middle of a street? <laughs> well, now, what about this old dog here? Looks about half bloodhound to me. Hold on. Oh, you don't really think that's going to work, do you? Let's give it a try. idea on how to get him started? What are you just telling? Oh. Now, look here, dog. This is Reese's shirt. Now, take yourself a good sniff and go find Reese. <laughs> he don't seem to be in too much of a hurry. Now, just take yourself a good sniff. Here, dog. Another sniff now. Come on. So go find Reese. Come on. Come on, boy. Go find Reese. Come on. Go find... <laughs> Do I think it will work? <laughs> how about you, dog? <laughs> And the food, Reese, cooked in wine. And the ladies, oh, all dressed in silk, wearing soft perfume. Oh, that, that must have been something, Major, just something. And, and the ladies were beautiful. Oh, Lola Montez would have been thought of as a plain country girl compared to the ladies in New York. Men shopped themselves over Lola Montez, didn't they, Major? Oh, sure. I knew her, Reese, yeah. My Lola was a lily in the wilderness. <laughs> but in New York, flower upon flower. Oh, Major, that must have been something. Just something. And you'll see it, Reese. No, no, I never will. I never Remember will at the all. the cane hasty and fast fastener? The fortunate means? Uh, when I hop off to little old New York, you'll be right by my side. We're gonna get out of here. Me and you, we're gonna get out of here. And you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, I never learned how to worry, Reese. Look ahead and hang on tight. That's what my father told me. And it stood me in good stead. Oh, them's wise words, Major. Wise words. It's impossible. Well, it don't make any sense. Unless they're little scratches and chicken marks. Them's ground plans, ain't they, Fred? And guaranteed to be perfect. Ah, you expect to rob a bank with a piece of paper. Can't rob this bank without them. Here. Ah, <laughs> oh, this one's gonna take some real figuring. This ain't no ordinary bank. <laughs> Matter of fact, it ain't no bank at all. It's but a sort of a special built warehouse with nothing in it but money. Not the cattle buyers exchange in Rio Verde. That's it. Oh, key God, you got grasshoppers in your head. It is impossible. Nobody has ever... <sighs> you got grasshoppers in your head. They sure got big plans, ain't they? Keep over $100,000 in there, I hear tell. More this time of year. Oh. Can't be robbed, so the story goes. I've been there, Major, and you sure heard right. It can't be dead. Why? It's got, it's got walls of iron, just, just sheets of it. And there ain't no windows. And it's just, just one door with no, no handle on the outside. Got to open it from the inside. Day and night, they keep a guard in there. Major, that just ain't no place to be robbed, I'm telling you. Oh, well, now, anything can be done, Reese. Now, aside from that safe, uh, they do have a safe, don't they? But it takes three separate men to open it. Well, now, aside from that safe, it seems to me there's only one problem. That is to get the inside guard to open the door. It's got three combinations. I seen it. And he wouldn't do it, never. Interesting problem. He wouldn't uh, help out them Aleuts, would you, Major? Huh? Oh, no, 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 of course not. No. But it does make for an interesting problem, though. 
dog knows what he's doing? Well, he sure looks like he's following something. Well, I sure hope Reese doesn't need help in a hurry. Let's go. Never. You stick with that, Major. I can take the best they got. The very best. This is a choice you get to make. And if you don't, I'm gonna shoot that friend of yours, and before he hits the floor, you'll be following him down. Now, here's the deal. You string along with us for one more job, and I'll turn your friend here and you both loose. Don't you buy any of it, Major. Don't you buy any of it. Shut up! When he talks again, you bang him one alongside the head. Well, I talk all right. All right, Major. That's my deal. Two stories high, right? Right. Uh-huh. And the stove, the stove in the exchange building, is that the same stove that's on these plans? It's a pot-bellied, uh, about so big. I see. You're not a sickly fellow, are you, Fred? I mean, you, your lungs are in good shape, are they? Well, never had any trouble with them. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Under what shape are the other boys in? For doing what? Heavy work. Uh, we'll need someone who's not too heavy and just a little light on his feet. Well, that'd be Matt. Him and Tuck will be back later this afternoon. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, that's all right. Now, I tell you, I'll need some things. So you better write them down. Right. First, we need three sets of blocks and tackle. And about five or six hundred feet of stout rope. And a canvas cover for the bed of the buckboard. And black shirts and pants for everybody. And get a three-foot piece of canvas beside, huh? And uh, some axle grease. Yes, sir. A couple of buckets full. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, some wooden crates. Uh, how many? Oh, as many as you can lay a hand to. What are we going to do with all this stuff? Huh? <laughs> now, the main thing is to work together. That is the whole key to my plan. Move fast and make no mistakes. That's why we have to practice. Uh, it's easier to rob three, maybe four little banks. Oh, Sab, will you just work along with us, please? I don't like all these plans and scratches. Go ahead, Major John. Don't pay no heed to him. Well, now the first thing we have to deal with are those three guards outside the building. Good shots, every one of them. Well, then we won't let him get a shot off. There's one stationed in the window of the third floor of the hotel, right? Oh, with a carbine. Well, Lou and Sav will take care of him. Now, you two boys go up the back stairs of the hotel to the roof, and you set a block and tackle. And then Lou lets Sab down outside the window. And when the guard pushes his carbine out the window, Sab snatches it away from him and gets the drop on him. Ah, uh -huh. 
You want me hanging down from the roof? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very well done, Sal. Yeah, you know this ain't so bad. <laughs> oh, Lord. Now, what you'll be doing, Matt, is to swing from the roof of the general store across the alley to the exchange building roof. And once you get there, you set up a block and tackle so as Fred and I can get up there, too. All right? Let it go. Ah, uh, that's fine, Matt. A little more practice and you'll have it down to a T. You got the best part. All right, don't you worry none, Sal. Next job, you can have it. Well, what do I do, Major John? Uh, you go down the chimney. How? Uh, loop the rope around you, Chuck. Uh, that way, if you lose your grip, the Fred won't fall the rest of the way. You mean I gotta go down that chimney? Upside down? That's the only way you'll fit in the stove. This is your fire in that stove this time of year. Well, now, don't worry. We'll get the guard to put it out. But that stovepipe ain't gonna be as wide as this one. No, it'll be easy once we get your grease down. You won't have any trouble at all. Tie him off, Chuck, and let him get the feel of hanging upside down. Huh? I got the feel of it. Practice, Fred, practice. <laughs> Everybody over here. All right, hurry it up. We've got to go over there now. <clears throat> now, Sab, what happens first? Uh, I come down from the roof. Lou has a rope on me. Uh, I wait for the guard to push his carbine through the window. Oh, that's right, that's right. And as uh, me, I, I come driving down the street in, in the buckboard. I, I get as close to the exchange as I can. When I get up there, I fall over in the seat like I'm drunk or something. The guard comes out to see what's wrong. When he does, Matt and Tuck reach out from under the canvas and grab his rifle. Good, good. Thank you. And Matt swings from the roof of the general store over to the roof of the exchange building and lets down a rope for us, huh? Then I go down the chimney. And when I get to the stove, I get the drop on the guard and make him open the front door. And then Major John comes marching in, opens that little old safe. We take the money and... <laughs> right. Now, we've got to see how long all of this is going to take. So we'll just run through it as though we were all there, see? Do I got to get greased down? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Fred. Uh, yeah, I think you'd better. Wait a minute. Uh, here you are. All right, fellas, take your places. Pleasure. Pleasure. Don't do it. Don't do it, Major. Don't do it. Don't do it! Uh... Thank <laughs> you. 
single blessed thing to do with cleaning out that Papirio bank. No, sir. Didn't never. That I'm pleased to hear, Reese. Well, I guess that's just about it, isn't it, Captain? I think so. Uh, Captain, I was just wondering, uh, what is that you have there? Oh, they uh, call this a safety pin. Uh, may I see it? Sure. Well, now, Captain, that, uh, that ain't what you said it was at all. That is a John Kane hasty fast fastener. That's what it is. Ain't that so, Major? Somebody beat me to it, Reese. Certainly not, Major. That just goes to prove that your idea was a very good one. Well, it'd take more than that to slow me down. Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> do you um, do you think it's possible for a man to fly, <laughs> Major John? If you say he can, he can. Well, he can, and I'll prove it. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>